all holy conversation and godliness. Isn't that right? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements. That's okay. We're just, it's going to be just about a few minutes. If you, that'd be fine. We're just, it's not going to be long. It's, it's, okay, all right, okay. It's not going to be long, okay? But look up here. Look up here, if you will. And um, it's not going to be long. And uh, I want you to um, look at here and, um, and this verse here. Sing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Say, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with what? With fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for what? New heavens and a what? And a new earth. Wherein dwelleth what? Righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let us all say amen. amen. So as you see what he's saying here in verse 11, seeing, seeing then, and we see what's going to happen. God has revealed to us. He's exposed. He's, he's, he's re revealed um, open our eyes to such things, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We know that these things are going to happen. It's all going to be dissolved. It's going to be gone. And the only thing that's going to last forever is what we do for Jesus. Friend, God is striving to cause us to live holy and godly. I'm, I'm so saddened in what we're seeing around the world. But God is in his desperation. God in his passion to see people saved from hell and, and, and to get prepared for heaven. Friend, we are on this earth to prepare for heaven. We got to remind ourselves every day when people die, they're either going to be forever in hell or heaven. There's no in between. Of course, 2 Corinthians 5 8, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We understand in Luke 16, the man was, he died and went to hell. He lifted his eyes in torments in Luke 16. Flames of fire. Fire, friend. In Mark chapter 9, we read those verses, 41, 42, 43, 44. Read those, uh, and uh, it's hell so bad. He said, don't let nothing stop you. If your hands are stopping you, Jesus said, cut them off. If it's your feet that's stopping you, cut your feet off. Whatever's stopping you, it ain't worth it. If your eyes, take them and go, pluck you, take your fingers and pull your eyeballs out. I've never been to hell. And I know we don't like to think about hell. And we don't like to talk about hell. But friend, there's a place when a person dies, they pay for their sin if they reject Jesus Christ. And it's only the blood of Christ can wash away sin. And only his death can save us from hell. We can never be good enough. 
And it's an insult to God to think we're good enough. It's by his mercy. And he wants to give mercy for us. And we have an opportunity tomorrow, tomorrow night as we go out and knock on doors and we go out witnessing and we go out with another opportunity to get somebody saved. The rapture, if Jesus doesn't come back tonight, if he doesn't come back tonight, we're, we don't know when he's coming back. But we need to, we need to be taking care of his work. We need to be warning people like Noah did. Because all these things are going to happen, friends. We're going up in the rapture. And then he's going to judge this world. We, we see what's going to happen. It's all going to burn up. And friend, I'll tell you what. If Jesus comes back today, we cannot take our house with us. You're not going to take that furniture in your apartment with you, in your house. All that wardrobe, all that wardrobe is going to be gone. Our wallet's going to be gone. The money we have is going to be gone. Somebody else is going to get it. Some of you know what I'm getting at. Nothing's wrong with having things. God blesses us with things all through the Bible. But he don't want us to worship the things. He wants us to worship him. And I'm sorry about this pandemic. I'm sorry about all that, what we're going through in our country, in our world. And all this frightening, scaring people with all these masks. And using as politics, using as control to scare people, to rule over people. And to control people's lives like I never. And the lies that they're telling people. Giving people false security by all these masks. And it's been proven that many a times and most of the time. It's not even, it's sad, it's not even helping. And they're still increasing more of it. And they're now talking about months and maybe a year. And then they want to change it to another year. It's crazy. We need to realize this thing is real, that God is trying to get the attention of the world. And a lot of people have died. A lot of people have gotten sick. People with mask, 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 shut down, shut down, shut down. After shutting down their businesses, friends, after doing all this, their numbers are going up in deaths. I'm talking about the people that said shut the church down. And opening up gambling places. Opening up abortion clinics. Shutting the church down, friend. Making it mandatory. Chasing them out their buildings. But God is allowing all this to wake the world up. And he's trying to wake us all up. And realize these things are temporal. We're finding out the people that worship jobs have no jobs. The people that worship money have no money. The people who went into the gym building their bodies up, and, and we're all striving to take care of health. Nothing wrong with that, but they worship their own selves and their own bodies. And they don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to think about eternity. They weren't even thinking about dying. By the way, thank you for praying for your pastor. God's given me so much. The Holy Spirit's been helping me. And God is revealing to me that they were not thinking about death, but now they are. Tomorrow night, we'll go knocking on doors, tell folks about Jesus. You know what we ask people? Are you 100% sure when you die, you're going to heaven? Do you know many a times in the past, they didn't care, they slammed the door, they were rude, but now you're talking about death if it came to your way. Oh, we like, yeah, I would like to know. I would like to know. I got a relative that's died. I got a cousin that's died. You know, I'm sorry in our city what's happening. Young people getting shot and killed. It's happening all over the cities and the black populous African-American community. All the deceptions of the liberals promising them all this, but the crime is just going sky high. They can't, bring, can't blame Trump now. He's gone. Can't blame him. Uh, 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 the, the, the black African American group said repeat it to the kids repeat it Trump's a racist repeat it repeat it Trump's a racist repeat it 
try to make them zombies. He's a racist. Day in and day out, all that, all them lies. And yet Trump brought in all these voices for Trump, um, black voices for Trump. I told you Martin Luther King's niece and so many of them for conservative values, conservative values. Thank God for Rush Limbo that was a talk show host of conservative values trying to promote it around America. You know, more of Christian values, you know, and he was a spokesman that, for conservative things, you know, and conservative, conservative issues, you know, and we, there's so much liberal, socialist, communist garbage out there, and he's, he's gone to heaven, and so we're going to have to step up to the plate, and we're going to have to speak out about what's right, and we're going to have to ask God to give us other spokesmen on the radio about conservative values, because then you got the ones on the left that's want to make it all socialism and communism and destroy our country. But God is, I believe he's waking up Christians and causing, he wants to see a great revival. God wants to see a great revival. He's not willing any should perish. He wants people saved. He wants people going to heaven. God has no delight in the death of the wicked. Isn't that right? He, he, has, no, he has no delight in the death of the wicked. He has no delight. He wants people saved. You know? And what you ought to be praying that people get saved. You ought to be praying that God will use you. You ought to be in tune with what God's saying tonight. Okay? Don't let Satan distract you. It's real. What about the kids in your school? What about kids your age? You got to care. You got to care. Isn't that right? And so it's, it's real, friend. It's all going to be burnt up with fervent heat. And all the works there that shall be burned up, all that stuff that people put so much time into. What does a prophet of man to gain the whole world to lose his own soul? What can a man give exchange for a soul? Isn't that right? Now what about the Christian? 1 Corinthians 3 and chapter 3, when you read it, you're going to find there's rewards that Christians can get. 2 Corinthians 5, you find out there's a there, there's the judgment seat. There's the judgment seat of Christ. You see? Have a great time. This is the last time you're going to be sitting uh, there together. So just rejoice. Have your little fun. Okay? I've taken all that I can take off it, but it'll change. I'll deal with it later. And, uh, you, got, you, you know, you know the, the, the bottom line is it's got to get real with you. It's not real with some of you. No, no, no. It's not real like it's supposed to. The truth of the matter is you need a burden for souls. You need to realize how hell's real, heaven's real, and you got to realize you're going to meet God, and you're going to have to give an answer to God. I hope you understand that. That's teenagers also. You're going to stand before God. Amen. Amen. Teenagers will stand before God. Every one of us goes stand before God and give an answer. That's right. How you pay attention to church. Yes, you will too. I guarantee you. You have to give an answer. And I'm telling you, there's going to be rewards in heaven, and a lot of people are going to lose rewards. There's going to be crowns given out. Some people are going to lose their crowns. I'll tell you something. You are, look, look. You know how much time you spent in prayer this week on your knees? Staking zero, I believe. Staking zero on your knees. You ain't, you ain't labored on your knees and you know it. You ain't got no walk with God. I tell you, you need to walk with him. I guarantee you need to walk with them. This thing's real, man. They don't even know where they're headed. They don't even know where they're headed. They don't even see where they're headed. There's... I'm telling you, it's going to take the Holy Spirit of God to open people's eyes up. Yeah, 
It's a lack of meditating in the Word of God. Yeah. So you got to read the scripture. You got to read it from Genesis to Revelation. Where are you at in your Bible reading? Where are you at? Where are you at in your Bible reading? Now, see, you're going to play around, and Satan's going to, I'm telling you, he's going to stick and tear you apart. You understand me? Do you understand? Nod your head if you, you understand me. Nod it. No, 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 no stick and smirk. We put our lives into you. We're tired of young people being destroyed by the devil. You are here to prepare yourself tonight. It ain't no joke. I mean, we've loved you. I guarantee you, you'll break yourself, you'll break your heart, and you'll break your parents' heart, you're going to break your pastor's heart. You're going to make it rough on yourself in life. That's sad. That's sad. You're going to smile now and cry later and regret later. You've got to make this thing real. <laughs> Genesis to Revelation. Once you read it, you've got to read it over and over again. Why? It's the word of God. It's the only thing that's going to prepare us for his coming. We're going to be weak. Satan will destroy us. I explained to you, how can a missionary go overseas and start losing his mind? How, can, how does that happen? Missionaries stop, stop meditating in the word. Missionaries stop reading it from Genesis to Revelation. Over and over again. They stop. Pastors stop. What do you think the devil do to you? Now where are you at in your Bible reading? Shame, isn't it? Shame, isn't it? Well, why, why don't you, you go to school, why don't you keep up where you're at? Keep up with your science and math. Come on, this thing's real. And I went home, and there was a lot of sticking wickedness and junk when I grew up as a teenager. But I went home, and I found me a room, and I read that Bible, and I prayed, and God blessed me. He blessed me. You got to spend time alone with God. You got to. Come on. You're getting older. Don't play with God. It's real. You walk with God. Say to make you a piece of bread. I'm trying to save you from some unnecessary hurt. Amen. Look, look what it says. Seeing then you, that, that, that all these things shall be dissolved, what shall manner of persons ought you to be in all holiness, in all, in all holy conversation and godliness? You know what that means? Would you look up here? How, look up here. How do you live when you're away from the pastor? How do you live? When the pastor's not around. How do you live when you wait for your mother and dad? What kind of life do you live out there? What does your neighbor see? What does your kids in school say? People going to hell. What does your family say? My brother brought it up. He remember I go down to the basement and I'll get on my knees and start praying. What does your family say? They were lost. They were living wicked lifestyles. Hey, don't tell me I don't know what it's like to go home with a bunch of people that don't live for God. And we love you. And I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to ready for, get ready for heaven. We get so comfortable on this earth. We get so comfortable. It's all going to be taken away. 
It's all going to be dissolved. We've got better things in heaven waiting for us. Better things in heaven. Eternity. Isn't that right? Holy conversation and godliness. Let me say godliness. Don't, 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 be too rough on, don't be too rough on the men of God that are tell, teaching their people, God's people, how to dress Christian. Get a, don't, don't give the men of God a hard time. When he rears back and he preaches against these different sins, exposing sins, striving to get God's people to live godly. Don't, don't be too rough on the men of God. Thank God for them. Love them. We got men of God around the country that are preaching against sin and wickedness and motivating God's people to look godly and holy. And, and they're naming sins. They're, they're naming. And the pastor gets up and he loves you and he throws a fit and he weeps and he cries and he, and he motivates you. And, 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 and that's what I'm doing tonight. That's a, that's why I pause during the sermon to try to reach out and say, live holy, live godly, live, live, live Christian. And the way you talk does matter. And the, and the honesty and the kindness and the, the be like Christ. I, I, want, I want to be godlike. I want to be Christ-like. I want, I want somebody to say, I see Jesus in you. I see Jesus in you. I, I'm not bragging on myself because it's not me. It's God. It's not me. It's God, is it? That is a Jesus person, they said. Mama, the Jesus person here. Or Mama, the, 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 the preacher's here. Mama, I never told them who I am. Mama, the church man's here. You tell the police officer by the way he dresses. Holy Spirit's helping me so much tonight. Thank you. We look at the doctors at the hospital. We see that's the doctor. We see the way he's dressed. That's the nurse. Well, that's the Christian. That's a Christ person. Amen. That's a Jesus person. Amen. That's a compliment. Amen. Godliness. Amen. That's what the, all these years we've been praying for, and, and couples and homes and families. That, now, I'm not saying we're sinless, but they should be able to see Jesus in us. Amen. And blessed Vietnamese people came and sat right here, couldn't even speak English. All they did is watched you. They look. They seen you. They're looking at you. They're watching you. They're watching me. We need to get ready for heaven. Isn't that right, my friend? Looking for and hasting on the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall be melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new one, new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Texas, we're praying for you. But Texas, God's trying to get your attention. And I know it's got to be rough. Did you see it on the news? And thank God for the man that has a furniture store. And, and the people are freezing and they're dying. And You know, the storm has come. And there's no electricity. And he has opened up the furniture store. People come in and sleep on the couches and sleeping on the chairs and sleeping. And he opens it up. He opens it up. And these people have nice houses and cars and nice houses. I believe God is saying to this world, I give you things. What do I got to do to get your attention? I just want, he needs to be worshipped. He needs to be adored. He wants to bless us. He owns the world. He has so much. He wants to get our attention. He, he has so much in store for us. And the more we praise him, the more he can do for us. The more we worship him, the more he can do for us. The more we live godly and holy, he can shed down his blood. That's why I get on you young people. Because I want the best for you. Anything wrong, wrong with the preacher wanting the best for you? Then look up here. That's why I want your attention. I just want you get in tune with God so God can bless your future so many have unnecessary hurt so many have unnecessary hurt it's not only Brother Burley but God's got to remind me it's not only Sister Patrice God's reminds her it's not only the Burley kids but the Barnett kids and all the rest of your kids sometimes God allows things to happen in this world To let us know, and it happens to me too, Brother Rowan. 
eternity. We better be thinking that we got a place that we got to prepare for and we got to get people there and this thing is real, that it's all going to go away. It's not just you. It's going to be gone. And really all that matters is that we got to get so wrapped up with Jesus and not get too comfortable. Go ahead, just keep on, because where are you at in your Bible reading? You, it's a shame. You'd be embarrassed. If I actually you stand up and say, where, where are you at in your Bible reading? Shame. God's love letter to you. It's health to your flesh. Everywhere you've been, everywhere you're going. No, 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 it's no joke. Look up here. Look up. It's no joke, man. No matter who you're looking at over there, and when they look back at you, they ought to, say, they ought to tell you to straighten up. They ought to tell you, you need to be listening and prepare because you can be dead. You can be the one sick. You can be the one in the hospital. And you get distracted. But I guarantee you, you read Genesis to Revelation of the Bible, you won't act that way. It's a Bible problem. You don't know how great God is. You don't know how big he is. You don't know what he's done. You don't know what he can do. We bring you here and put our lives in so that you don't wreck your life one day. Amen. And that you can have God's blessings on you. You can avoid some hurt. Now you, you do what you want to do, but I made up my mind, I'm going to avoid some hurt my parents went through. You go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. I seen what the hurt came to my brothers and sisters. You go ahead and have it if you want to. But we love you. We're just going to give you a chance, man. Amen. It's going to give you a chance. you get distracted I want you to know God I want, look okay you say you, you don't understand all of it I, I read it I don't understand it all but I guarantee he'll give you something you do understand Amen. if you can stay focused if you can stay focused Amen. and the reason why some of you are having trouble staying focused right now you can't stay focused when you read your Bible at home Look up here. You ain't stinking drunk. Look up here. You're not a drunk. First of all, you're too young. Come on. Come on. Stay focused, man. Stay focused. Stay focused, we are. And your future will be bright and blessed. Let the church say amen. Nevertheless, we look at verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for what? New heavens and a what? A new earth. Wherein dwelleth what? That's all it's going to be, friend. Filled with righteousness. Now, corrupt, stinking politicians. Now, rigged elections. Lies. It's all right. It's okay. Everything's all right. God is in control of it all. God does it on his time. Not on the wicked politician's time. Now baby slaughtering. Baby shedding of the blood. Sodomy. Changing genders. Wicked ungodly musicians. Gang bangers. Drive-bys, corruption. Friend, friend, what do you expect God to do? Trying to get the attention of the world, man. Trying to, trying to wake us up. No preacher on this world knows it all about how beautiful, wonderful our minds cannot comprehend. We just can't comprehend how great. Right now, they're... I don't know how much it's going to cost a million. I don't know how much, how much they're going to pay. They're going to pay it. They're going to get on that rocket. They're going to go as far as they can up there. Some of them want to go on the moon. Really? really? They got nothing. Millionaires, billionaires. They just want to, you know, just say, God help them is right. God, God help them. God help them. 
Amen. Get saved. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, friend, I don't understand it all. It's too big for me. But God's going to have this thing, brother, this heaven and earth. Wow, what kind of, what kind of thing? I, you, can't, you can't imagine it. But I'll tell you, there's going to be a lot of disappointments. A lot of people think. They got the wrong thinking, man. Hey, look up here. You think if you don't straighten up, you think if we don't straighten up at times? Brother, we're going to miss out on some things. I thank God for heaven. But there's going to be a lot, a lot of rewards. We're going to say, what, what, how stupid we were. How stupid we were. Because we didn't do all that God wanted us to do. What he had in store for us. And I'm telling you, you're going to be glad. And I'll tell you the reason why some people don't live godly and Christian. and They don't serve God like they really should. And they don't give like they should. I'll be honest with you. Very little faith. Very little faith. That's why they don't take time out for the eternal. Jesus said, lay up treasures for yourselves in heaven. No moth going to corrupt. No thieves going to break through. There's going to be a day, Brother Burley, we're not going to have to worry about our wives in the hospital. We ain't going to worry about these bodies against them. We ain't got to worry any about any pandemic. No mask. None of this stuff going on. None of these shutdowns. We ain't got to worry about the governor threatening us, about coming to church, and taking our rights away, telling us how we got to live in our homes, in our schools, our jobs. What about this one, the threats? What about this threat? Like you get pulled over in a car and get a ticket during this pandemic, how they might even start giving citations. How about that? How about those threats? Oh, there's been a lot of threats. Of course, traveling across to another country. What about this one? You really want to get down to Atlanta, see your loved one, or I want to get to Connecticut. And the government says, you ain't going nowhere. And if you do go, we will chase you and bound you and put you in jail. It can get that bad, friends. God is trying to tell us, friend, this world is not our home. We're just passing through this place. And we better get acquainted with God. We better get close to him. We better live, we better live holy lives because, friends, we need God. What encourages me about Sister Patrice being in the hospital? I'm telling you what encourages me, Brother Burley. What encourages me about your wife, your wife and about your, your, your mother, Brother Tim? You know what encourages me? Sister Patrice can get to God. I feel sorry for the people in the hospital that can't get to God. She sang that song, God will make a trial a blessing that the whole world will see. I feel sorry for those people up there. The brother, they wrap themselves up in everything in this world, in this life. Brother, their whole, all their life is in the things they can't even get to God, man. What God said, there'll be people trying to get to him. He's going to laugh. He's going to laugh. Because they thought they could just keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and play with God. You don't believe me? Read Proverbs chapter 1. Brother, there's going to be day, sister. Everybody needs God. God is trying to wake up our city with all these killings and all these drive-bys. Brother, you don't think after seeing about 25 deaths on Selma Avenue on the east side of Knoxville. What the city calls the lower crust, the lower crumbs in this, and the, and the most, the most highest rate of crime. Not every one of them by drive-bys. But you get a boy inside the arms of my dear wife trying to stop the bullet, uh, the bleeding. And Cheyenne's seen it as well. And that boy dying on that step and shot the wrong person. An autistic boy 
and my wife comforting that uh, mother. And we just got back and started praying with her. Could have been, look up here, could have been my boys out there that got shot on Selma. Just minute by moment, some bullets all in your car and your, and your car's in the shop for, for weeks. And God reminds you, you make sure you love me, serve me. And this car is a material thing, but that can be you. It can be your wife. It can be your kids. It don't have to be that neighbor. They come shooting crazy, stinking thugs and punks. Don't even care who they're shooting. You'll see you need God. When you're out in the parking lot right here and you're talking to people trying to minister to them and they point the gun right at you and them. And you get to look at the gun down the barrel of a gun and you get to look at them and they let you walk by when usually these thugs and these punks, they don't care. And they'll shoot everything in sight, the preacher too. And God lets you walk away. You'll see your need for God. Isn't that right? I need God, friends. Only thing that matters is what we do for Jesus. And I'm glad that God blesses us with things, and nothing's wrong with that. God talks about how he wants to give you things. Delight thyself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart, the Bible says. Okay? He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Okay? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and I'll add all these things to you. Okay? He says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the car lots. He owns all the houses. You know, and he says he'll clothe you. He just don't want us to worship things above him. He wants you to serve him. He wants you to love him. Amen? Sometimes God wants us to appreciate our wives. We'll appreciate Sister Patrice a lot better, a more, as a church member. Brother Burley appreciated more as a wife. I'm sure Brother Tim appreciated him more as a mother. And they appreciate him, don't get me wrong. But sometimes he with my wife, my children, my family, my church. We need to appreciate the things that God has blessed us with in life. I need to appreciate you. And I do. I love you. I try to tell you. But I always don't appreciate you like I should. And we're human. And we need to thank God for each other. And realize the things that last us forever is the way we treat each other. Because it's all going to be gone. It's going to be gone, friends. And there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And I don't, I, I wish, I can't tell you. Paul said the things are so beautiful, so wonderful. He, it wasn't lawful. Second Corinthians chapter 12, it wasn't lawful for him to tell anybody how wonderful and beautiful the things he's seen. Our minds can't even comprehend it. I just beg you, let's live holy, let's live godly. I want our church to represent Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want us to appreciate each other more. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for these precious people. And I ask that you help us. Sometimes we get caught up in this world. We forget about eternity. We forget about that one day. Huh, it's not only going to be Sister Patrice Burley, it's going to be me. It's not only going to be their children, it's going to be my children. It's not only going to be them. No, it's going to be all of us. It's going to be my wife. It's going to be my kids. It's going to be me. We're not going to be here forever. And all that matters is what we do for you and how we need to serve you and how we need to love you and how we need to live for you. This world is filled with sin. And help these teenagers to realize this. Help these young people to realize this. 
God, I pray that you help them. I pray that you wake up all these young people. Help them to live for you before it's too late. And help them to realize even teenagers, after this week we've seen are taken out of eternity. There's a teenage girl that's dead. There's a teenage boy that's dead. Not old people, they're dead. And it can happen to any of us. Some in car wrecks, some with diseases. But God, help us to think about eternity. Help us to appreciate what we got. We pray for a special healing. A special healing for Sister Patrice. Pray that, dear God, that you would help her to recover soon. Strengthen Brother Burley, Brother Tim, and the rest of the family. All the family. Help me. Forgive me at times. I don't appreciate my wife as much as I should. Sometimes we're human, every one of us, God. We just fail sometimes to be all that we should for each other. We thank, we're thankful that you give us time to just do better. I want to do better as a husband. I want to do better as a father. I want to do better as a pastor. We're human, and we need help. We need God's help. We need your help. Heads about.